today, um, the purpose of today's lesson is to review inequalities um, from the pre-algebra perspective, meaning like on a number line. We did this in, in Math 7, we did this in Accelerated Math 7, so in both, in last year's material from the pre-algebra perspective. Um, so before we begin, I really want to talk about the symbols. Um, I want everybody to repeat after me how we call this name. How would I say this? Everybody? Less is than. less than. Not just less than, is less than. Okay? How do I say the next one? Is, is greater, greater than. than. The next one is, is less than or equal to. to. The next one? Is and then the next one? Is approximately equal to. And here we have? Is not equal to. So we have things. Right here we're separated into equalities and inequalities. An equal sign represents an equation, meaning both sides are equivalent of the equal sign, right? And we would say for an equal sign is the same as. Um, what I really want you to notice is, Let's look at the charts up top that say three less than a number. And how is that different from what we see right here? How would I translate three less than a number? Gideon. Uh, that would be x minus three. Good. Because when we see the word less than, that implies minus. Um, specifically, the word than means that we have to crisscross our terms. And the number comes over here, right? Um, so how do we tell the difference in the language, whether they want us to subtract versus use one of these inequalities or the e equal sign? Um, go, Logan. Logan. It says is less than, that being the key word there. So when you see is less than, okay, when you see is less than, really what you're signifying is a result. Is less than, is greater than, is approximately, is not, is the same as. You're signifying a result, an equal sign or an inequality. Um, so... That's what we're talking about today, our inequalities. And we're looking at a lot of the language. So last night I gave you the homework and I asked you to, um, the first section was graphing on the number line. Okay, so when you're given an inequality like this, sometimes I used to say, okay, everybody list the numbers where um, x is less than or equal to 2, so I want you to list every number less than or equal to 2. And I have kids sit there and they're good little robots and they write down all the numbers. At what point do they stop? In five minutes? The end of the hour? On Friday night? The end of your life? At what point do we get to stop writing numbers that are less than negative two? It's infinite, right? Yeah. So because it's infinite, we use A, an inequality like this, to show something that's infinite. Remember we were talking about all real numbers are less than two? takes too much time to write them all down, or we graph them on a number line. When you graph, I expect two numbers on your number line. You should be taking notes. I expect two numbers on your number line. So when you do your number line, um, I really want two little tick marks. Um, I want the number that you're working with, and in this case, they're talking about two, and then in relation to zero. Since zero is to the left of two on a number line, I put zero first and two. When you read the inequality, it says x is less than or equal to two. Where would I start on my number line when I went to graph, Amani? At the two, is it a solid or an open circle? It's a solid circle, okay? And then it says less than or equal to, I'm going in the less than direction. So when I talk about the list of solutions for this inequality, that means my list starts with the number 2. Number 2, um, 1.99, 1 and 98 hundredths, uh, negative 1, 0, everything 
everything less than two and including two. Including two. Is everybody clear on that? Now, when do I do that? When I see this solid dot or when I see that equal sign underneath. Okay? As opposed to, I make my number line for the next one. What are the two numbers I need on there, Riley? Good. Always writing our zero. I, if it said negative 200, I, I mean, if it said 200, I don't want you to write 200 little lines. That takes too much time. So where, am I, where is my starting point now? How about Vic? Negative three. At negative three. Is it solid or is it open? Uh, I don't remember. Well, well, it's an open. Didn't you just write that list? You should have it in front of you, okay? Now, what direction am I going to go in, Vic? Uh, towards the left. This way? Yeah. Okay, read this to me. X is less than negative 3. Okay, so when you have the bigger opening next to it, that implies greater than. Okay, so I would read that X is greater than. Okay, as opposed to X is less than, that's the smaller opening touching the X. Do you see that? Okay, so how do I read this one? X is greater than. How do I read this one? X is less than. Okay, so now how do we read, um, how do I read this inequality right here for number two? X is less than, or X is greater than negative three. Good, X is greater than, and all the numbers greater than negative three go in this direction. Okay, questions? Um, okay, so is everybody clear what my expectations are for graphing? Yeah. Okay. Um, where we tend to get in trouble with the graphing is when you get something like this. Okay. What are the two numbers I need? The Zero and negative 15. Which one do I write first? Negative 15. And here's my zero. Now, where does it start, Jason? Good. Is it a solid or an open circle? Open circle. Now, what I want you to do is rewrite it so we always read from the variable first. Okay, I'm going to write the variable over here. What is x next to, the greater than or the less than? What is it next to? So you're going to say x is greater than negative 15. Now you're going to graph it. x is bigger than negative 15. So I go from there, I'm going to go all the way over here in the greater than. I mean, there is the option. To read from the variable x is greater than negative 15. So you always read from the variable or move the variable back and switch the sign. So whatever the sign is that's next to the x, it has to still be the same if you rewrite it. Is that making sense? Yeah. Okay, questions? All right, so let's move on. Um, let's get into some translating. So I don't want you to write all these digits on your number line. It will take too much time. How would I say number one? How do I read that response? Louis. Um, is, greater than or equal to? is greater than or equal to. Notice he started with is. Emerson. Is less than or equal to? Good. No, not equal to. Or is less than. Is less than. The next one, let's go with um, Miriam. Good. The next one, Gideon. Uh, is less than or equal to. Good. Uh, next one, number five, Turner. Is greater than. Okay. And number six, Vic. Is approximately equal to. Is approximately equal to. And then the last one, how about Andrew Cohen? Is not equal to. Okay. So noticing the language compared to these two charts up here. What's different about this language 
talking about inequalities compared to those two, um, those two phrases on the wall. Gideon? There's no is for those operation. When it says less than, we're using minus. When it says more than, we use plus. When it says is less than, is more than, we use the inequality. Okay? Questions? If you think you want to write this down, you can pause the recording and write it down. But we're going to skip this for right now because we are doing multiple lessons. All right, so um, how would I translate Owen, uh, uh, Hugo? How would I translate number one? How do I translate it? What am I going to write? X is greater than 18. Okay, number two. Number two. How about Dion? How do I write it? Perfect. How would I show Adam twice the number X is less than five? Perfect. And the last one, I want everybody to jot down the translation on your own paper here for number four. Go. Number four. Write it down. Pause the recording. Okay, now check your work. Notice we have eight more than twice the number P. That would be 2P. We're going to crisscross our terms. Plus eight is less than or equal to 40. Okay, questions. All right, some tricky ones. I suggest you write these and write fast. Um, the first phrase is X is at least five. That means it could be five, it could be, what would that look like? Gideon? Greater than or equal to five. So X is at least five. At least 5 is x is greater than or equal to 5. Next one, y is at most 10. Y is at most 10. Imani? Y is less than or equal to 10. Next one is p is no more than 6. Let's go with um, Ethan. Uh, p is uh, less than or equal to 6. Good. And then we have n is no less than 8. N is no less than 8. Riley? Uh, N is greater than or equal to 8. Good. Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay. Pause the recording if you want to keep taking notes. Okay. Moving on. So how would I show? Um, actually, I want you to put it on pause, and I want to try. I want you to try all of these on your own. Okay? Try translating all of these on your own. Pause the recording. Okay, let's get started. Um, let's go with Sam in the back. How do I show twice the number X plus 4 is at least 10? Uh, is at least, so it has to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, 5 less than 3 times Y. Vic? I got 5 minus 3Y is less than or equal to Okay, one more time, Vic. Five less than, and it has the word than there. Three oh. y minus, minus what? Five. Is at most. Uh, less than or equal to nineteen. Perfect. So we're kind of mixing it all up. Next one, go Turner. Uh, two times the quantity of x plus nine is less than thirty-five. Two times the Okay, next one, Ford. Ford? Yeah. Okay, that one, it would be um, 15 
It doesn't equal. Oh, right. It's just one step. Oh, um. Oh, six in parentheses. Well, I want you to translate the way it's written. Okay, so. It doesn't start with six. It starts with 15. Uh huh. Then uh, six parentheses times the quantity, times the quantity of, P to seven. of P minus seven. Good. <laughs> okay. Questions? Yeah. Is it number three less than or equal to? Probably yes. I probably missed that. Number three, yes, is no more than. It would have to be equal to. You're right. Thank you, Oliver. Okay. So. I'm going to keep going. Um, a while, okay, other, the phrases get confusing because where kids confuse them, remember, this really means what? Go. Okay, this really means what, Jonah? What? N no, it doesn't. It means what? Go. X plus five. I want you translating properly. Okay. Whereas 5 is more than x, is 5 is greater than x. Andrew, how am I going to write x less 8? doesn't say than, it just says x less 8. Good. And then when it says x less than 8? Nope. Keep going. Look at the pattern up here. You've got something very similar. How do I show that? 8 minus x. Okay? 8 minus x. Then, when I have something that looks like this, what are we going to write? X is less than 8. X is less than 8. So, do you understand how it gets a little confusing? What do I write for x is at least 8? How about Scarlett? X is at least 8. Is at least, I have at least 25 cupcakes. Um, greater than or equal to eight. Yep, greater than or equal to 8. I'm going to skip that. We talked about, um, how, what would I do here? Circle each solution for the given inequality. Is 4 a solution? Could I substitute yeah, yeah. it for x? Yeah. Could I substitute 5 for x? No. Negative 2? Yes. 8? No. 0? Yes. Okay, yes. 3. All right, um, back when we were talking about um, domain and range, we mentioned all real numbers less than or equal to 3. Now, this is the only exception. Do we see is no. less than? No, but it's an, it's an exception. We are still using the inequality here because to talk about multiple real numbers, we can't just use x. Do you understand? We have to use the inequality to imply more than one answer. So all real numbers less than or equal to 3 would be translated like this. How would I translate all real numbers greater than negative 2? How about Aram? And how would we show all real numbers less than negative 4? How about um, Cameron? Yep. Questions? It's not or greater than. It says less than. Oh, I was looking at two. Okay. All right. So we're going to skip the next part and move on to some of, oh, well, we did do this. Okay. A number X is at least two. How would that translate? Go, Megan. Good. Next part. Uh, let's go with Kieran. Uh, y is less than negative 2. And then the last one would be translated as, how about Greta? Um, a number and, um, it's less than or equal to 3. Start with the correct translation. So 
No more than. No more than. What does that translate to? Oh, um, <coughs> less, less than. Yeah, less than four. Good. N is less than four. Okay. Well, less than or equal to. Less than or equal to because it would include four too. All right. We're going to jump over to a different PowerPoint. I'm just going to. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. So as I mentioned, we are continuing on with our review of inequalities. Um, so when we have an inequality, we basically treat it the same way as an equation. And we solve the inequality by using our inverse operations. So what's happening to x in number one? Um, let's go, Kieran. What's happening to x in number one? What do we see happening? Answer the question. It's being, multiplied. it's being multiplied by 4. So what we have to do is the inverse of that. The inverse of multiplication is to what? Divide, Divide what? Divide Where? Complete sentences, please. Um, by four. On? Oops. One more time. I'm not. OK, so what are we doing now? On both sides. Good. We're using our property of equality. We can either call it the multiplication property of equality by multiplying a fourth on both sides or division property of equality. And we get x is less than or equal to 5. And this is solving graphs. So when that happens, the expectation is I have 0 and 5. We start at 5. Is it a solid or an open circle? Oh, solid. 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 And we're going to go in the left direction, right? And so um, I'm just realizing I left out adding and subtracting. So let's take a step back. Last night's lesson was on adding and subtracting. So, I'm right here. Um, so if you had an inequality that looks like this, what would we need to do to solve it? One more time, Karen. Subtract by 5 on both sides. And right here, we're actually using, using the addition property of equality because we're adding negative 5 to both sides. I'm left with x is greater than negative 3. And then we graph it. Any questions? If I had last night, we did x minus 10 is greater than, or let's make it less than 22. OK. So what am I going to do, Lily? Um, we would add 10 to both sides. Adding 10 to both sides. Good. I like what I'm hearing. People talking about properties of equality. And we are left with x is less than 32. Any questions there? So everybody understands. It, we treat it like it's an equation. The difference is when we finish, the sides are unbalanced. It's not like there's that idea of equivalency, x equals a quantity. It equals multiple quantities. So then we went into multiplying and dividing. We talked about how we divide both sides by 4 or multiply by 1 fourth and x is less than or equal to 5 and then we graphed it. It's a solid circle and we went in this direction. What would I do? What's happening to x? Listen to the question. What's happening to x right now? Um, Turner? Being divided by so what's the inverse operation? Multiply by 3 on both sides. Or you can also see this as the coefficient is 1 third. We can multiply by the reciprocal too, which is the same thing as multiplying by 3, right? Multiplying by 3 on both sides, x is greater than negative 6. You with me? Now, when do the rules start to change? When do the rules... L Logan. When you're dividing and multiplying negative numbers. When you, oh. when you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay? So... When I, I divide both sides, go, Oliver. You divide by, both sides by negative 2. Negative 2. Okay. So notice, I am 
dividing by a negative on both sides. When that happens, what happens? The sign switch. The inequality flips. When you multiply or divide by a negative or a positive number, the inequality flips. And so then I get x is less than negative 5. Is everybody remembering that? Yeah. Now, it's not just enough to have this negative here. You, more, you, it's more than just having a negative in it. You actually have to be doing the action of multiplying or dividing by a negative. Yes, Louis. Because you're taking the opposite of both sides. So it takes the opposite quality, uh, inequality. Yes. Just to make sure, like, when you're, like, like, let's say it's two, like, you subtract two. Subtracting it doesn't happen. Addition it doesn't happen. It's only when you multiply or divide. So if I have... X divided by negative 2 is greater than or equal to, um, let's go, 8. Okay? X is greater than or equal to. What would I do, Ethan, to get X alone? Multiply by negative 2 on both sides. I'm multiplying both sides by negative 2. I could say the reciprocal by negative 2. And notice I line it with the numerator. That's the only way you can cross cancel. Right? And now, because I'm doing that, what's my new line going to read? X, X is, greater, is, is less than or equal to eight. I mean, uh, negative 4. Negative 16. Be careful. We're multiplying, right? Yeah. So when it's division, we do the opposite operation and we multiply. Okay? Does everybody understand what's happening here with the sign? When to flip the inequality? Okay, um, the last section that we're going to be doing is section uh, there it is. Okay, is section four four? Okay. This is where we are dealing with multi-step equations. Same thing as in chapter 3, except, oops, except that um, we're dealing with two-step equations. Please pay attention to the directions. Sometimes it says just solve and you write the inequality, but sometimes it says solve and graph. So let's start with this first one here. And what would I do first? What do we undo first, Vic? You add four to both sides. Right, we undo our addition. We peel it like an onion. Add 4 to both sides. I get 3x is greater than or equal to 21. And then I'm you divide three on, both sides. Divide on both sides. And we get x is greater than or equal to 7. And then graph. On the next one, we're going to add 5 to both sides. And then we're left with x over 2, or x divided by 2. And then what would we do? Go, Greta. <coughs> Multiply, by two on both sides. Multiply by 2 on both sides. Okay. Um, this one's a little trickier right here because it looks very simple and it looks like one step. So step 1, what do I do to get rid of the 7? Go, Jonah. Subtract seven on both sides. And then, am I done, Andrew? What? How do I get rid of that negative, Daniela? Times both sides by one, negative and then what happens to my symbol? It gets, it gets positive. It be, no, it it gets positive, but the inequality flips. Got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. We can stop there, and that is the lesson for today.